Out of every video I've ever made on this channel, this video is the most important video that I could ever make and you could ever listen to. That's gonna completely transform the way you think about setting goals and doing your work on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And if you don't have, honestly, if you don't have 10 minutes to watch this video until the end and understand what I'm about to tell you, the goals and the frameworks and the tools which I'm about to give to you in this video for free, if you don't have 10 minutes, then you're not the type of person that's gonna take your life seriously, gonna take VCE seriously, gonna take year 12 seriously, and wants to achieve their goals. So leave the video now, and the people that are gonna to continue to watch this video, um, I'll give you something really valuable so you can actually implement it on a day-to-day -day basis, right? This is not similar to the other videos which I made in the past where I just go and I talk to you and I try to motivate you about something, or I tell you something on a high level. This is a very specific type of video and I go to the white I'm going to go to the whiteboard in a second and explain to you exactly how you can break down your goals and what you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis pretty much give you 100% clarity behind what you need to be doing in order to guarantee that you succeed and guarantee you achieve all your goals, okay? I know this is a bold claim, but when I say you're gonna have a 0% failure rate when you listen to this video, when you understand and digest all the concepts in this video, I'm being serious because of the way that I reframe everything and the way that I re tell you to rethink about everything, okay? It's gonna be a complete paradigm shift. It's gonna be mind blowing. It's gonna be a complete mind shift and you're gonna understand exactly what to do on a day-to-day -day basis. This is not only just for academic achievements. This is not only for your education, not only for year 12, this is for anything in life. Now, this method, which I'm about to tell you, is the method that's gonna allow you to completely transform your life. It's a method that's gonna, it's a foolproof method that lets you achieve all the goals that you ever wanted to achieve in any aspect of life. But I'm gonna talk about this specifically for doing well academically, right, in year 12. If you're a year 12 student and you wanna know how to do really well, this is the foolproof method, right? This, I learned from this person called, um, his YouTube channel is Bulldog Mindset, and he talks about how he's achieved so much in life, and I've also used this principle as well, and he, there's three steps to this, right? There's an aspiration, there's a goal, there's a process, right? So he, so he talks about A, G, P, right? You have an aspiration, you have a goal, and you have a process. What does this mean? Okay, so an aspiration is what you guys usually use as the end outcome. A lot of people think the aspiration is the goal, and a lot of people have the aspiration as the goal, right? If I was in year 12 and I wanted to do really well, I wanted to get a really good score, a lot of people's goals would be, I wanna get a 98 ATA, or I wanna get into engineering, or I wanna get into medicine, or um, I wanna get a 90 plus for my next sack, for my next exam, right? That's a lot of people's goals, but that's wrong. That's not how you're meant to think about it. You don't think about the goal, you don't think about the, you don't think about that aspiration. Everything which I just told you is an aspiration, right? It's the end outcome. What is the end outcome? It's to get a good ATAR. It's to get into uni. It's to get into engineering, get into medicine, go to Monash, go to Melbourne. Those aren't the goals. These are aspirations, okay? So let's write down these things which I just talked about. So some of the different aspirations you can have, I'll do this in a different color. First one we talked about was getting into engineering, getting into med, getting into Monash uni, right? Getting a 98 ATAR maybe getting a 90 plus on an exam, okay? Do you, do you see how everything which I just wrote here, you have no control of that. You can't control getting into engineering. You can't control getting into med. It's not something you can do. There's no action behind it. It's just something that you see yourself doing. It's the end outcome. It's the end goal. And a lot of people think that's, that's my goal. That's what I'm going to look at every single day. No, it's not in your control, right? So that's your aspiration. That's sort of where a lot of the motivation can come from, right? That's sort of what you look forward to, okay? So that's the aspiration. What's the next thing? This is the goal. The goal is actually what you can do. What is something that you can do, which you know for 100%, 100% probability or 99 or 98% probability, you will achieve this aspiration if you commit to this goal. What is that, okay? So what that means is if you do engineering, you wanna get into engineering, what is the goal? The goal is to have done 100 pass papers maybe by the end of the year, okay? On and getting a good score on all of them. Not even getting a good score on all of them because you can't maybe control that, but doing 100 pass papers by the end of the year before your exam. That's a huge goal, by the way, but that's something that's in your direct control, okay? So what we can write is for engineering, 100 passed papers by the end of year, 
Okay, do you see? Okay, for engineering, we need 100 past papers by the end of the year. Okay, that's a huge goal, but we, we'll talk about stepping that down into smaller chunks later on. What about for getting into med? We, well, we can say the same thing. If your goal is to get into medicine or engineering, we can say 100 pass papers by the end of the year. If I have done 100 pass papers and I go through all these pass papers and I correct myself, right, then I will know where I get wrong in these pass papers and where I can improve on next time. Every single time I do these pass papers, I will get better. I know for a fact that if I do 100 pass papers, the chance of me getting into medicine or engineering is nearly 99, 98% because no one else is gonna be doing that, okay? That's the goal, because it's in my direct control. Let's talk about, well, they're all the same. We can say the same thing, doing 100 pass papers for Monash for, uh, for to get a 98 ATA, to get a 90 plus in your exam, right? And there's, there's different things you can think about. For some people, it might be um, doing a thousand practice questions. For some people, it might be doing a hundred past papers, right? For some people, it might be uh, making sure you might have a checkpoints book and you want to finish that whole book of questions, that checkpoints book by the end of the year. Maybe you might have three different books and you want to finish all the questions in those three different books. There's thousands of questions in them, but that is the goal. That's something that's in our direct control and we can control, right? That is the goal. And this is what a lot of people get wrong because a lot of people think that the goal is the aspiration. A lot of people think, Getting into engineering is the goal. That's not the goal. That's what you want. That's the end outcome, right? The goal is an action. If a goal doesn't revolve around an action, it's not a goal, okay? The goal is to do 100 past papers. The goal is to finish that book of questions that you have lying in your house. The goal is to finish the whole checkpoints, VC checkpoints, and finish that so then you can actually start um, to get good at each of these questions and actually perform well on the exam, right? And the process, this is the last thing, the process is what do we do on a day-to-day -day basis to break this goal down, to make this a possibility, okay? The process is study for two hours a day and do past papers for one hour, okay? That is the process because that's something I can commit to on a day-to-day -day basis. So for 100 past papers, the process for that might be, I don't have enough space, oh, I do, but this might look weird, but the process for this, okay, is... Two hours of study a day. Okay, the process is two hours of study a day. One hour is going to be recapping all the theory. The other hour is going to be just doing questions for the whole hour and not worrying about anything else, right? So, or we might even take it one step further. Um, 30 minutes of theory, right? One hour and 20 minutes of questions and the last 10 minutes of correcting the questions. Or we, so what I would personally do is I would do 30 minutes of theory, right? I would do one hour of questions and I would do 30 minutes of uh, going over the questions and correcting myself, okay? Correcting. Okay, so 30 minutes of theory, you look at all the things you learned at school today, an hour of just doing questions straight for the whole hour, no distractions. 30 minutes, you do the correction for all these questions so you know what you got wrong and how to improve for tomorrow when you do the process again, okay? So, again, aspiration is the end outcome. The goal is the big bulk of the work which you need to get done by the end of the year. And that's the goal. And the process is what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. My process on a day-to-day -day basis would be studying for two hours, but the way I would specifically break that down, 30 minutes of theory, an hour of questions, 30 minutes of correction time, right? So I know what to do for tomorrow and I would repeat this, okay? This way, how are you gonna fail? Because even if you don't get your aspiration, that's not how you define your goal. That's not how you define uh, the outcome. All right, this is the outcome. That's not how you define the process. The process is what's gonna actually allow you to hit your goal. If you focus on the process, right? Then you will hit your goals. And a byproduct of your goals is achieving your aspirations. That's all it is. So you don't have to worry about if you don't get your aspirations. All you have to worry about is committing to the process. If you commit to the process, you will achieve your goals. And please note that your goals are not your outcomes. Your goals are just things that are in your direct control that you do by the end of the year. If you can get your goals done, then the aspirations will take care of themselves. That's all it is, right? You, a lot of people get it wrong because they say that this is the goal and then they don't have a direction day to day to do things. 
they get close to an exam, they get close to a test, and they start doing a lot of work. But the thing is, if you do it like that, everyone's gonna be doing it like that. Everyone's gonna be coming close to an exam and they're gonna be studying their asses off. That's not how you succeed, right? You succeed in creating a system. You don't rise to the level of your ambitions, you fall to the level of your systems. So if you have this system in place, if you have the process in place, everything will take care of itself. If you try to do this any other way, you will either not succeed or you will be highly disappointed if you don't get the result you want. This way, you might not even succeed, you might not even achieve your aspiration, right? Because there's always a possibility of you failing. But you won't think that you failed because you tried everything in your best capacity. Let me tell you the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario for you now is you do two hours of study a day. You do this 100 past papers by the end of the year, right? Because this leads to this. And then let's just say you don't get into bed, you don't get into Monash, right? You don't get into engineering. What happens? It's fine because you already defined to yourself at the start of the year that there is a process that I think that I have to do, right? And you tried your best every single day in order to achieve your goals. The reason for a lot of people's um, regret with failure is because they thought, oh, I should have done more. And they look in hindsight and they say, I should have done more. I should have been more prepared for this. I should have done way more for this. But the thing is, if you have a process, right, and you're committed to the process, you're not going to go, if you don't achieve your aspirations, you're not going to go back in time and think, oh, I should have done more. Because you already thought to yourself that this is what you needed to do in order to achieve the process. So at that point, your discipline wasn't the problem. Your planning was the problem, right? And so this is why you can achieve your goals still, even if you don't achieve the end outcome. And this is how you tie your effort and your day-to-day -day work with your daily tasks, right? It's the process, it's not the outcome. And that's, that's the main thing which I want to talk about here. You change the way that you understand or you change the way you think about how these goals what these goals mean to you. And if you can change the way you think about that, then it'll be very easy to commit to this process, trust me. Look, I understand it's very easy to get stressed because most of the time you guys have all these goals that you you set up at the start of the year. Like you wanna get into Monash University, which is where I'm right now, or you wanna get into engineering or medicine, or you have all these, these goals, but they're not really goals, they're aspirations, right? And you wanna get to that. And you're stressed because you have all this pressure from your parents, from your friends, right? You have high expectations of yourself and you feel like you should be able to get this. You feel like you deserve it from all this hard work that you've been doing. But it can get very stressful and that can really impact the way you study and that can really impact your output and how effective you are at studying. So it can start like a downward spiral of negativity, right? But if you can completely change the way you think about this, right? Don't think about the goal as being coming to Monash University, doing engineering, doing medicine, right? Getting into a STEM degree or getting into a career path which is high paying. Don't think about that as the goal. Break it down, go one, that's very high level you're thinking. Break it down one step further down. What do I have to do to get to engineering, to get to medicine? Well, I have to do like uh, maybe 20, 25, 30 past papers by the end of the year, okay? Or I have to do, uh, I have to do the last 20 years of past papers three times over to make sure that I have a 100% chance or 98% chance of getting into medicine at Monash University, right? And I have to remember all the answers to those questions. Maybe that's a very big goal that you have by the end of the year. Then the process is gonna be, what do I do on a day-to-day -day basis? So now you break it down, right? You think, what do I have to do on a day-to-day -day basis in order to work up to 20 past papers done twice or three times over by the end of the year? And if you can make that process if you can make the process the goal, then even if you achieve it or if you don't achieve it, you're going to be happy. Because if you achieve it, well, then you've committed to the process, you got the goal, and then your aspiration you achieved, right? If you don't achieve it, it's fine because you committed to the goal and you tried your hardest. And if you try your hardest and you still don't succeed, you might be a little bit pissed off at that, but you're not going to be depressed about that. And that's the biggest thing in the mindset shift that you can make is stop trying to tie your self-worth or like your everything that you want to do or the goal to the aspiration stop trying to do that tie it to the process if you tie it to the process it's going to be like a chain reaction upwards so take care of the bottom half and the top half will take care of itself pretty much